I'm Jason Reynell. I'm going to be giving you a tutorial on creating 3D space using just still images. I'm going to teach you how to make something similar to this. That's not a very quick preview. That's just me, you know, scrubbing through the timeline there. But yeah, something to that effect. So uh, what we're going to go do is we're going to create a new composition. I choose D1 widescreen, just regular DV quality. We're going to come in there, and uh, what I have done is I have taken these. Shot, uh, these shots of hills and I'd Photoshop and cut out uh, them into different layers all the different hills so we can stagger them in our 3d composition so what I've done just save them all that way on just different layers cliff obviously is one layer itself you can do multiple if you wanted to bring out that little grassy brush hill there but uh, also imported uh, when you import them you're gonna go file import and then when you select Photoshop files, you were given the option to invert uh, either merged or just regular layers. Uh, you can choose individual individual layers, which is what I do. You just import them all that way. So we go. We're going to drop sky down into our main into our main composition. We're going to click the 3D box. Then we go layer new camera. I choose 35 millimeter, my preference. I'm going to set it up that way. Um, so then we go to the sky and you can see here that if you go into uh, the transform menu for sky and you uh, click on the Z axis which is the the third value to the right there you can bring it back far you can scale it down under scale you can move it around but the Z axis is the key right now we want to move it back very far probably somewhere around a thousand then we go to all of our different hills here and we're going to drop them down in and start just layering our 3D space here. So make sure the key here also is when you layer all of these or when you drop all of these into your composition, make sure you click that 3D box to the right on the on the item itself, and that will give it its Z axis. So we're going to group, uh, we're going to select both of these together. We're going to move them back to where our sky was, right around a thousand, so that they are because these will be our mountains in the very back and so that we don't want them any further back than the sky but uh, we do want them staggered a little bit so the, the hills in the background here we want to bring those back one, background ones back just a little further than the foreground one bring the foreground up with we'll scale them keys for this is S for scale P for position when you've selected any items in your timeline so we once you get happy with where those are and in your positioning here we make sure you give them some distance between each other on the z-axis so that when we turn depth of field on the camera on that uh, there's some sort of blur effect which gives it a more realistic look so we'll start moving along here with all the other hills and start layering them do the same thing uh, do make sure that uh, what I've done here accidentally which uh, I'll, I'll show you how it ends up not working but you want to make sure that uh, you layer them in the correct order just like you would with Photoshop the ones you want on front you the ones you want on are the ones you want on top in your timeline um, so just positioning everything the way the way you want it to be again make sure you click that 3d box otherwise you, you'll just be two-dimensional no matter what the camera does um, so see you can see here that since that uh, the foreground hill is actually under the background hill and the layers is still not helping me out very much at all so what we want to do is we're going to switch that around here. Get it going just a second. There we go. Yeah, perfect. There we go. So let's start. We're going to start positioning everything the way we want it to be and the way we want it to appear. This is again. This is the active camera view. Uh, so this is what the camera is seeing. And this is the way we're going to be working with that way when we animate the camera we know what the camera is going to see when we export it there are other views top side all those where you can maybe adjust things a little better when you are staggering the uh, the hills so here we take our cliff image we drop it down in here resize it uh, position it to where we think it looks good um, Keep on scaling it down, moving it around. We want to give it the appearance that there's a group of people gazing off of this beautiful scenery. So let's go here. We're going to position it. We're going to bring it a little closer to the camera, which is actually negative Z space. All right. So then we go up to the camera controls. 
up there. And as we pull back, you can see the staggering a little better for all the different items. So we're going to bring it just to the point to where the sky's on the edge and where we think things are looking good. And we're going to go into the camera settings for position. And to the right there, there's that little dot you click for keyframing. So we'll keyframe our first instant here. Then we're going to scrub all the way to the end of the timeline here. Whoop. And we're going to set our end point. So that's the Z camera movement with those two arrows on top. The little cross-shaped one is the X and Y for the camera. So we'll move it up, get a nice little view of this hill here. Just come over the crest of that other hill. Bring it in to where we think it's going to look good. That'll be our final frame. And it's automatically set our keyframe for us. So when you scrub back, that's the look. The sky's a little in the way here, or not in the way, so to speak. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come and we're going to adjust its rotation. So there's uh, several different ways you can rotate things, X, Y, Z. Um, I like to uh, rotate it so that it's leaning forward towards the camera a little bit for sky background. And we'll scale it up just a bit. This way when the camera's flying through, the depth of field will help a little bit on the clouds uh, because they're coming, they're at a, um, a Z axis angle. So, um, we can go in here, we can move uh, the camera around a little bit and just adjust it. All of this is up to your discretion as to how you want to uh, make your flying movements do. Uh, you can keyframe the camera pretty much any way you want. Uh, camera tends to work a little better uh, doing one at the beginning and one at the end, uh, otherwise movements tend to get a little jerky. Um, not as smooth. So, now we'll go text tool, create our title, which I've chosen my website address. Expand that a little bit. Again, make sure to click that 3D space. And we do know that the hill, well, we want it to be nesting or resting on that uh, green hill over, over there. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go find out what that position is on that hill. We're going to go enter that, hit P go to the right side, the, the third value, and then we hit that and it drops right in there. And there we go, and it's, it's resting right on that hill. You can reposition it, put it wherever you like, obviously. Um, then what we do, uh, yeah, kinda like that. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go uh, into the camera settings we're going to go camera options. We're going to click depth of field on. We're going to set the aperture. I chose 100. That'll give it a little blurriness to the background objects. We're going to go up to focal distance, change that to where the people in the foreground are in focus to begin with. Uh, find whatever that position is that works best for you. Then you can do a blur percentage. I usually do a little more than 100% blur. All depends on the look you're going for. And yeah, you can set it that way. The keys right here is, you know, your fir your first frame and your final frame. Obviously, you want your focus points to be you know, what's in focus. So, yep, get those set to where they need to be. Then hit RAM preview. And after a little bit, you'll be able to watch it go through like this. And that's what your final video will look like.